it's cherry season and our trees are laden with cherries but we've got to do something with them before the birds get them all now i love cooking with cherries i love cherry pie i love cherry crumble but today we're going to make something a little bit different Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the garden. My name's Hugh, and today I want to talk to you about cherries. And I've got a different cherry tree behind me now, also laden with fruit. And that's kind of a point I want to make. People tell me that birds always strip all their cherries. Well, there's two kinds of cherries. There's sweet dessert cherries, and I love those. They're fantastic. But the birds really do go for those. But there are also these cooking cherries, sour cherries. And yes, the birds will go for them, but as you can see, provided you're quick, you can beat them to it without netting, growing the sour cherries. And these are Morello, which is one of my favorite varieties of that kind of cherry. Brilliant, and pies, crumbles, you know, cook with them, they're fantastic. But today, we're gonna to make a fruit leather snack, which is just delicious, particularly in the winter when it's all dark and gloomy and you've got this zingy, wonderful taste. We've done a rhubarb fruit leather before. There's a link somewhere up there. So I'm gonna go quickly through this process because honestly, it's super simple. If you've got a dehydrator, it's a great way of making the most of this bountiful harvest. So without further ado, let's get on. If we look closely at this cherry tree, what we can see is that there are lots of different states of ripeness. Now what we need to do is harvest the ripe cherries but leave the others behind. So we need to know how to tell if a cherry is ripe. It's very simple really. Pick one that looks ripe. Hold the branch firmly as well as the cherry and give it a gentle tug. The cherry should come away but leave the stalk behind. Once we know that, we can go around and pick the cherries that we want. And I think to get a decent harvest, you need a tree that is big enough that you can harvest it only really using steps. If you've got a small ground level tree, you're not going to get enough cherries to get a decent harvest at one time. So I just use a small four tread step ladder to move around, picking from each branch and moving the step ladder from time to time. Now, while we talk about moving the step ladder, there is something that I want to mention. Try and find yourself a basket or a box or a Tupperware pot that neatly fits onto your ladder's platform and even better, try and secure it in some way. The number of times in the past I've managed to spill what I'm harvesting by moving the ladders is incredible. I've now got a basket that sort of jams tightly on the platform and that makes my life so much easier. This is what I'm going to call a minimum amount that you're going to want to be able to harvest to get a decent amount of fruit there, frankly, to make this exercise worth its while. And what you can probably tell is the only real way you're going to do this is to grow them yourself. And all I'm doing is giving them a rinse and picking out any little bits of leaf or twig or stem that have come with the cherries. And the next job is to de-stone the cherries. And honestly, this will take a while and you need a cherry de-stoner. It's the only practical way of doing it. How does it work? Well, it's really very simple. Think of it as a hole punch. Put a cherry in, give it a push, the stone flies out the bottom. I'll do that more slowly for you so you can see it. And with it tilted on the side, you can see there's the stone. Once I've de-stoned about 20% of the cherries, what I do is get a bit of water on the boil, just a few tablespoons, and I'll put those cherries in and I'll let them start to cook down. And if you look carefully in this scene, what you actually see is the occasional cherry flying in from the left. And what I'm doing is de-stoning the rest and adding them to the pan so they cook down in cherry juice rather than in water. So all I'm doing, cherry in the thing, squeeze it, take the cherry out, chuck it in the pan, next cherry, and carry on. And I'll do that until I've got all the cherries stoned. Then I'll bring the whole mixture up to the boil and start stirring to make sure it doesn't stick. And really, these are just cooking in cherry juice now. Most of the actual water we put in has boiled down. And I'll boil that until all the cherries are soft. And once they've become soft, and you can see them almost fall apart, I use a stick blender. I think these are wonderful things. I'm just going to reduce all those cherries down to a smooth paste. It really doesn't take very long, provided that you've cooked them soft to begin with. Once you've done that, 
give them a taste and if you need to add some sweetening at this point depends very much on the types of cherry you use i would generally add sugar because it's got some preserving properties you can add other types of sweetener but it won't keep as long i'm going to let that cool just a little bit down to about 70 degrees centigrade and then i'm going to dehydrate it and as you can see here what i've got inside my sort of cheap dehydrator is some dehydrator sheets they're sort of non-stick sheet that lies across the tray and stops the leather or any kind of liquidy material dripping through onto the tray below. If you haven't got any, you can use things like cling film, although I'd let the material cool completely first. Or better than that, if you can get your hands on some, is some of the non-stick liners for ovens. They work really well if you cut them to size. You can also buy these dehydrator sheets and cut them to size on places like eBay, Amazon and any good cook shop. I like using this little ladle because it's got a lip for pouring, but again, you can just use a serving spoon, you can use a ladle, use whatever you've got. Try not to get it right up to the edge of your dehydrator sheet, because obviously as it starts to dry, it can spread a little bit and drip through into the tray below. Once you've done all of that, what you want to do is get it as close to the middle as possible, but if you have got a dehydrator like this one with a central air column, try not to let the material actually touch it. And when you're finished, use the back of the ladle or spoon to smooth it out and get a nice even layer. When that's done, stack your trays up and don't fill the trays so deeply that the fruit leather touches the tray above. And I would recommend putting a lid onto the dehydrator even as you fill the next tray because obviously you've got a sweet sticky material. You don't want flies, etc. getting it trapped into it and sticking in it. Step after that, Put it on to dehydrate. It's going to take a while. There's 24 to 36 hours at about 65 degrees centigrade. And you want nothing liquid left. You want it to be quite a firm leather at the end. Normally tell that your leather's done by the colour change. You can see it here. You see how much darker it goes. It goes almost back to a deep cherry colour. And here you can see what happens if you let it touch that central air well. It's kind of stuck around the middle bit. It's honestly not a problem. As long as we peel it off the dehydrator sheet, it'll just lift clear like that. And then we've got a full sheet of fruit leather ready to go. Next step, I take a big pair of scissors and I cut the fruit leather into long strips just using nice clean scissors. Once I've done that, I'm going to roll it up because that makes a really nice sort of snack-sized portion. And it also means it doesn't take up so much room in the jars. So there we go, an individual roll-up. I'll take all of those roll-ups, I'll put them in an airtight jar, and I'll label that jar. And I like using these sort of oil-based pens. And provided you've dehydrated it fairly well, it should last at least six months in that jar without refrigeration. But you can refrigerate if you want to be extra safe. Well, that is cherry fruit leather. It does take a little bit of making, but so many of the best things in life are worth taking that little bit of effort and making yourself something you just can't buy in the shops. I hope you've enjoyed the recipe, and if you have, could you spare us five seconds? Give us a thumbs up down below. If you'd like to see more on what we do to preserve all this wonderful, bountiful produce that we get so that we can enjoy it all the year round, just let us know in the comments what kind of things you're interested in and I'll try and make those videos for you. If you'd like to see them and everything else that we do and you're not already subscribed to the channel just tap on subscribe down there, hit the bell next to it, you'll hear every time we upload a new video. But for today, thanks for watching, come back and see us soon. Take care.